Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today you guys caught me on a good day. I'm going to finally do that masterboard that I talked about or been talking about for the longest. I'm going to use um, a combination of matte Mod Podge, which looks like this and some clear gesso which I've mixed together in this little jar right here it's like a little container um, filled with matte Mod Podge and um, and clear gesso um, no water but I will spritz my paper with um, a little bit of water just to get it moist and to let all of my scraps stick to it so yes I'm finally going to do this masterboard so I'm just going to tear away one of these oversized sheets this is a um, large pack that I picked up at the Goodwill last week and um, it's a large paper pack a3 paper sketch um, sketchbook paper and oops sorry um, yeah I'm just gonna tear one of these out I'll give you the measurements of it just in case you guys have something similar and this is my box of scraps. All right, let me open it up to get the glare out of your face. This is one of those 12 by 12 um, uh, containers that can house large paper packs or 12 by 12 paper packs. And guys, this is just one of my piles. I have a bucket <laughs> under my desk. And I'm just gonna try to use up as much of this as possible. So I'm just gonna grab some of these out of here. I don't know what yet I'm going to do. I'm just gonna grab some of this paper. It could be pretty paper. It could be just plain lined paper. I'm also gonna try to stay away from cardstock. So if I get in here and there's cardstock in here, I'm gonna try to stay away from that because I don't want my master board to be too thick. So. Yeah, I'm just going to pull out as many pages as I can find that will work in this process. But you guys seen me do this before. It's just it's just playing with paper. Look at all of this. This is like a stack that I could be using. Anyway, um, yeah, it can go it can go really quickly or it can quickly go awry. So we'll just grab some of this and see how much of it we get through. The only problem with making a master board is that a lot of times um, you start off with using up your scraps and then you end up making more scraps. <laughs> so that's why this box just never seems to get empty. All right, let's move it out of the way and I'm just going to slide that under there. All right, so here is my large um, sheet of paper and again it measures where's my ruler right in front of me hello well, I'll just use the, the mat it measures Ugh, now that I got all my scraps on top of it I can't see the measurements um, it is about 11 and 3 quarters by 16 and a half yeah, about 16 and a half, a little, little under. So about 16 and a quarter, okay? So that's what I'm going to use today to, um, to make this master board. And then from there, anything can happen, right? You can use your master board to make just about anything. You can make cards, tags, pockets, envelopes, you name it, all kinds of ephemera um, for your junk journals. So that's why I'm doing this today because not only do I not have a readily available master board to cut up little things like this and I think I made this uh, a few weeks ago I made seven items from one 12 by 12 sheet of paper and it's kind of like the same thing guys it's like you can just make things until you run out of paper so I have all of these little um, file folders that we made I have a bunting flag on here, which I see is stuck to the back. I have an envelope, which I made from all from the same sheet of paper. Three tags. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then I still had these two little um, tabs left over that I can still either put together and make another bunting flag or use as little, little tabs to uh, flip the page over. So... There's all sorts of possibilities to make um, things with from a master board. So 
I'm just going to spritz this page with a little bit of water, not a whole lot, and then um, grab my gesso Mod Podge mixture. Let me spread this water out. And I'm just going to apply paper to paper using this stuff. So Mod Podge is um, it's a sealant. Basically, it's like a water-based sealer, and it'll seal your project in place. Ugh, gosh, it'll also make everything shift. It'll seal your project in place um, um, as you go. So there'll be a bottom coat and then a, t a couple of top coats. So I'm just going to pop things down anywhere tear paper if I have to, add more Mod Podge and gesso mixture together, and yeah, we're just playing with paper today, guys, like we always do here on the show. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we do other things, but today we're just playing with paper, and um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a crafty day, as always. I always wish you guys crafts in your future, um, either today or someday soon. Everyone should des uh, deserves to play with paper and whatever you're into, whatever crafts you're into. It should be a fun day for everyone. I just so happen to have um, not so much the time, but... Just I'm I'm just so fortunate to have the the ability to to do this right. So I can ink my pages if I want to, but that'll just take even longer. And what I found is that inking now really doesn't matter. Um, it's not until you start cutting up your pages into the items that you want is when you decide where you need ink. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not even going to bother to ink all of these individually. Um, a lot of them are coffee dyed paper from previous projects. So, it, they already may have some ink on it. But, it's not the end of the world if they don't, if they aren't inked. So let's see what else has been going on. I've been making um, really fun things. I like the junk journal that I made, the Stemperia um, Spring Botanic Junk Journal. I like it so much, guys. I want to keep it for myself, and I know that that is a no-no. That is a bad thing to do. Um, I really need to share it with you guys, so I'm thinking... I'm thinking I should put it in the 1,000 subscriber giveaway because it needs to be out there. It's such a pretty journal. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to just give it away, put it in the giveaway, and someone else can enjoy it out there in the world. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Should I keep it and journal in it and do like a journal with me type of uh, thing or do one of you guys want it <laughs> because yeah I really need to start giving up some of these some of these things that I have here in my craft room so here I have some rice paper I made this a while ago this is just some dictionary paper with some leaves diagrams of leaves so I'm just going to place that right up here. So yeah, this is rice paper that I made um, out of dictionary paper. I know it doesn't look like it, but these are the leaves on this side. And this is the dictionary page on the other. So what a fun little piece of paper this turned out to be. I really like making rice paper. Um, some of you, well, some of you have asked, like, where'd you get your rice paper? So I just direct you to the video of me making rice paper. 
So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> I would try to put that video like right up here for you guys. Um, making rice paper is so, so simple. Um, yeah. All right. My battery is flashing at me, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I'll be right back in about two ticks. All right, guys, so got a fresh battery in here, and we're just going to pick up where we left off. And um, I have also some old newspaper that I want to use. Just going to place that just about anywhere. And Mod Podge and Gesso um, really works well together. Uh, they dry really quickly as well so here's that rice paper I was telling you all about I just realized that this dictionary paper is just coffee dyed and because it's so thin it took all the coffee and soaked it all up and then I toasted it and I cooked it in the oven and uh, that's what it looks like really thin dictionary paper soaks up your coffee and then gets really crispy in the in the oven I normally don't um, cook my paper I just sit, set it outside because I live in a very warm climate Florida is just so hot almost all the time and um, yeah it doesn't even need to be uh, cooked and I realized that not afterwards I always knew that but for some reason I did that to this dictionary paper it might have been a rush a rush job to where I needed it right away and um, yeah so that's what I did it came out really nice I actually like it like that nice toasty little piece of paper um, here's some more of this rice paper this was I made this out of a napkin and I will place that right down here actually what I'll do is because it's clear I'll grab some of this let's see I'll grab some of this recipe paper so this is just a little bit of recipe from that very very old recipe book and because my my rice paper is so thin and it's also transparent I'm just going to place that right on top of this recipe partially overlay so sometimes I mean when you're making this um, master boards you can also just you know do glue if you don't have gesso or um, Mod Podge and Mod Podge is really inexpensive, but if you don't have any, you can just use glue, either a wet glue or a glue stick, and you can achieve the same results. Master boards are so easy to use, and they're so useful um, in, in your craft room. So here's some more of this dictionary paper that's been dyed a different color. And just going to place it right up here just to break up some of that brown this one is a little a little bit more red all right we're almost done like next all I need to do is just let this dry and then we can chop this up and do all kinds of fun stuff with it so I just found this little sticker underneath my master board here so I'm gonna use it what's the worst that can happen <laughs> What is the worst that can happen? Let's see. I'm going to place it right here on this very plain piece of paper. So I was telling you guys last week that I am totally behind on all of Malena's M Scrap Busters. I'm not even sure um, if she's done any recently. That's how far behind I am on even watching other YouTubers' videos. It's just, uh, it's not that it's a chore, it's just that between making my own videos, work, and kids, and, and you know, everything else, 
it just it I don't have the time I don't <laughs> I just cannot find any time to do it so I do need to like just take a break like take a step back as we all should every once in a while just take a little step back and um, just watch Milena's uh, M Scrapbuster challenges just to get some ideas and also partake because um, yeah using up scraps with her little projects are super fun and easy so um, and it's it's using up your scraps in a different way right so it's not always it's not always the same but yeah guys I hope y'all are having fun in your crafting spaces doing fun things and uh, have the opportunity to play with paper so and without my camera running I can do this for hours just hours and hours <laughs> but because I'm recording and I'm on a time crunch I um, I'll do this really quickly but normally I can just sit here and glue paper to paper all day long without even really thinking about it uh, let's see I'll grab some of this book page up here and place it down here in this lower corner And there's no, there's no perfect, uh, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever you want. So there's no real perfect way to do this. Again, like I was saying, you can use regular glue. You can use Mod Podge and Gesso mixed. Um, you can use glue stick. Just about anything. As long as your paper um, dries really well. Because that's when um, you need things to um, uh, to dry and so that you can cut it up so I have more of this more of this very old very brittle um, recipe book and I think I showed you guys the book it was like from the 1800s I picked it up in a little town called Ajo, Arizona. <laughs> and uh, Ajo is spelled A-J-O. And it's right at the south border of um, Arizona and Mexico. And my phone is ringing. Let's see who this is. It's my mom, guys. All right, let me, uh, let me talk to my mom and I'll be back in two ticks. Okay guys, that didn't take very long. My mom got another call while we were talking, so she had to go. But um, yeah, this is, this is just what it is. Paper glued to paper, glued to paper. <laughs> and then once this is dry, we will chop it all up. So you notice like you start off at the, well this is how I realize like when I'm going like astray. Like I start off up here I have large sheets of paper. Then by the time I get down here it's like tiny sheets of paper. So right up here and this is why I like to use paper. Right up here in this section I can put a couple of layers. So I can because it's just paper right. I can just take uh, some more paper and just layer it right on top of this other paper and that breaks it up just a little bit because if you're using cardstock it'll be too thick and this uh, old um, cookbook is so brittle anyway that it's not even like putting anything on there so there's that and um, I'll just put a little piece of something right up in here just layer it, layering on top of each other. Okay. And over here on this side is where I need to 
get some of these longer strips in. So I'm just going to pop this down like right here. And Mod Podge and Gesso together, the clear Gesso together, I'm basically doing two things. I'm doing glue and doing the, uh, the sealant on top. So it's basically killing two birds with one stone. And I'm just using my Tim Holtz Distress uh, brush um, because it spreads the glue out so nicely. So yeah, uh, I wanna put some color down here at the bottom and I'll use some of this, this dictionary paper that's so nice and toasty. I'll just place it right here yep yeah when you're using Mod Podge and gesso clear gesso mixed together you're doing both you're doing um, the glue from the Mod Podge and then you're coating it all at the same time so it works out both in your favor and in the favor of the paper this way you don't have to layer too many things on here all right guys I'm gonna let this dry okay and if I come back and it's crimply that means it's drying well um, if I take a look at it and decide that I need something up here I'll probably place a little something up there I have here the um, master board it's all dry it's a little wrinkly in certain areas and and that's great I know that it's dry underneath I had enough scraps to make a second master board this is not as intricate a lot more plain paper around here for us com as compared to this one and then I have a third one that's drying right now and it has even more plain well, even more plain paper um, on it because this is what I had left over I had enough scraps guys to make three master boards um, they get less and less detailed as I go through the scraps I could have gone back in the box and pulled some more like book pages and whatnot but I just went ahead and used what was on my desk so this went from very detailed to less detailed to even even less detailed <laughs> all right and this one's still a little wet so I'm gonna set this aside to dry but um, we are ready to go with our decorating of this master board and um, I'm probably going to use uh, this, this stamping block right here, which is just the background stamp. It won't, I won't need too much of that on, on this particular one, but I'll also use these double-sided floral stamps. So there's a full um, fully bloomed rose of flower on one side and then one that's closed up and or dying on the other side and uh, I have two more of these I picked these up at the thrift store I think it was OMG thrift and that's what they look like so I am going to stamp on here just a little bit not a whole lot because I do want to get these cut up and I'm um, ready to be used so I'm going to set this other one aside grab my ink I want to use let me use Versafine ink and this is in the color black or onyx and um, yeah I never know like which way is the top and which way is the bottom on this thing okay so this is the top up here <laughs> and I'm gonna try very hard not to drop my stamp on my paper willy-nilly <laughs> because that can be pretty bad all right so here we go I'm just gonna find like a space on here that can uh, use some background stamping and then I'm gonna grab my little stamp press just to apply pressure all around the stamp to make sure that all that ink transfers okay and we'll see what we got not too shabby it's hard to see there's some sort of a glare um, on the paper but this I tell you this is matte Mod Podge and clear gesso 
okay so I guess the lighting in my room may be showing that it's a bit shiny it really isn't it's very matte actually <laughs> um, from where I'm standing so I'm just gonna stamp one more little area right about here apply some pressure with my stamp uh, applicator and um, then I'll use some of those florals to do the same thing. Yeah, not too bad. I'm, I'm okay with that. Just got to find an empty spot on my desk to put something down. Goodness, my desk is it's closing up on me. It's getting claustrophobic in here. Alright, so I'm going to use any one of these. It really doesn't matter. And I'm just going to stamp just about anywhere. So guys, um, I also, um, I was waiting for this to come in the mail and it finally showed up. So I, I told you guys I broke my guillotine and I needed a new one. So I got in the mail a brand new guillotine, which is exactly the same as the previous. And um, yeah, so I'm going to open it up and get it uh, set up here on my desk pretty soon so that I can chop up some of this paper because, yeah, I need it. <laughs> I need it. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to, oh, that smudged a little. It's fine. I'm just going, whew, whew. <laughs> I'm just going to apply this, uh, these little florals just about anywhere on here. I'm trying not to get it on my desk because this is a permanent, sort of permanent ink, right? So. Okay, I'm going to stop there before I ruin it, ruin it. Um, so yeah, I'll stop right there for just a moment and give this a second to dry. So for the other one, um, this is my other dried one. Um, what I want to do, I have here in this little spray bottle some vanilla craft smart paint and I'm just gonna drizzle some of this grape taffy color it says raisin caramel is the translation to another language raisin caramel as opposed to grape taffy I'm just gonna drizzle some of it on here no it doesn't want to drizzle okay there we go all right, and then I will spritz some of this white or vanilla color as well. So I'm gonna hold it up just a little bit so it doesn't go in places that I don't want it to. Oh, that's so cool. That, guys, was very, very cool. Yep. I love this process okay and um, yep I'm gonna set this aside to dry yeah that is very very cool I don't know if the camera picks it up but it looks really good here so this right here is gonna take a lot longer to dry than just my stamp paper so I'm just gonna set that aside and because I like that process so much I'm gonna bring in the wet <laughs> things are falling by my foot <laughs> I'm gonna bring in the wet one um, this is still wet um, masterboard I'm just gonna do the same thing here I'm just giving my bottle a squeeze while I move the paint bottle around 
and then I'll spritz it with the white. Okay, and I will give this even more time to finish drying and um, and then we'll cut it all up, okay? While all of this is drying, I'll go ahead and show you guys my um, guillotine. And uh, it's by the same company, Marigold. It served its purpose when I had it and I was very pleased with it. So yeah, I just bought another one just like it and it arrived late last night. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and pull it out of the box. Now I picked this up at, I believe on Amazon, and then while it was sitting in my shopping cart, my little friend over here told me that there was a sale on it. It was probably like $5 off, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Now this may or may not be in my uh, links down below, but if it's not, I'll go ahead and put it in uh, down at the bottom here in the description box so that you guys can uh, assess for yourself. I mean, this worked out great. It's a 10 sheet, 20 pound um, max capacity, so that could have been my, my error, my fault. Um, looks like it's missing something here or oh, maybe it's in the bag um, that could have been my fault for um, crunching through too many pages but I uh, <laughs> I broke it <laughs> there it is there's the handle okay okay so Yep, I broke mine and needed a replacement, and I just figured, well, I'll just get the same thing. Why ha Why should I try something new when this one worked just fine? And this is what it basically looks like. And I like this one, one, because it's a 12 by 12, or really it's more than 12 by 12. It's a like 12 by 14 um, measurement and besides the inches it also has the millimeters on here or is it millimeters or centimeters? Um, centimeters. So uh, obviously between each centimeter is a millimeter so um, it, the, all the measurements are there. Less measuring with the ruler and and the arm also stays down in place and is not a threat. <laughs> I always feel threatened by the swing line. There we go. All right, so I just, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I just put the, the handle onto it. And I'll show you guys, like in here, there's this little um, notch, that little second, uh, sorry that little bottom notch right there is where it clips in right here and the arm is not threatening you know the other one um, the swing arm that I have that arm is very threatening and it's constantly like swinging up on me or falling down on me and um, yeah it's just it's scary <laughs> It's scary stuff. And this one has a guard here. So this is the amount of paper that you can fit in here. I believe the swing arm, I'm, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Is it swing arm or sing arm? I think I'm just so afraid of it. I call it a swing arm because that's what it does. That arm swings around. But anyway, um, yeah, so when, you're, when you slide your papers into here to cut it, you press right here. You put your fingers, there's a little spot, knocking things over. You put you put your fingers like right here and right here. And that holds your page. Well, of course, your page will be much bigger. That holds your paper in place to get a perfectly straight cut. The swing arm does not have this guard. 
okay so you take a risk on getting straight cuts even though it's capable of cutting lots of paper a lot more paper by by having this guard here it you just get much straighter cuts because you're it's more controlled you know what I mean anyway guys you get what I'm saying I'm gonna let my stuff dry and this also comes with a punch right so you have a five millimeter corner punch right here just line your paper up with the angle right there and now you have a five millimeter punch all of my punches have um, four seven and ten so if you want something in between the four and the seven there's a five millimeter punch right here on this one so it's all good it's called marigold I'll put the link in the description box down below for you guys okay guys my papers all dry I just need to remove the edges so I'm gonna use my new guillotine to cut that away just set this right here and I'm gonna flip my paper over this is what it looks like when it's done and dry and then I'll just put this in my stash and have it readily available for whenever I need something pre collage going to tear away or at least cut away all the excess paper that's overhanging on the edges so all of these little all these little frays here I don't need that okay and anything else on the edges here that I cannot reach with my guillotine I will just cut it with my scissor So guys, I hope you enjoyed this process. I'll show you what the other pages look like because those two are also just about dry. And um, yeah, this is a 16 and a quarter by 11 and a half sheet of paper, A3. So there's what that one looks like. This is what the others look like. This was the second one that I did. And again, um, uh, I think, oh, nope, it's still wet. <laughs> I was just about to say, I think it's completely dry, but there's still some wet spots on there. And this is what the third one looks like. And I know that spot's wet. So I'll just leave it to completely dry before I flip it over to cut away the excess pieces that's hanging off the edges like right there okay so I'm gonna leave you guys like right right here I hope y'all enjoyed this video um, I hope you have a crafty day go do something wonderful guys and I will definitely talk to y'all in the next video yes check out my links down below hit the bell for notifications after you've subscribed and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content here on this channel Stay naturally curious. Bye.